Hello and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can turn a plain turtle. So we're going to start out with my turtle base already done and how I then improvise it into this little pumpkin turtle. You can do the same amendments that I'm doing on this turtle on my whale and I'll have the pattern for either one of these. You can get them for free linked down below for the first week. Uh, after that, it will be $3, but it is a Ravelry code. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely go click on that link down below. Hopefully it's in the first week when you see this because you're subscribed and you're clicking on all my subscriptions. That is a benefit is that you get to see when I post things first. I do this with all of my videos. So if you're interested in knitting and crocheting content, mostly crocheting, ironically from the Knit Grit name, but basically if you're interested in that, do go down in the description and click on those and hit the like, subscribe, do all that stuff. We're at 55,000 subscribers, which to me is just mind blowing. I never thought that I'd be able to like get that far and I do ramble a bit in my videos. So it's incredible that I've gotten this far. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. As I said, you're going to need the base for your little turtle here. I'm not going to show how to do these because I'm essentially showing how to do the leaf, the little stem, as well as the twine right here. And you do the same thing and the same steps for bringing in your sides as you do for the whale. I'm not going to show the whale. I just wanted to show you that you could do the whale and I'll have a pattern for both of those down below, like I said. But essentially you're going to want some worsted weight yarn. I am using some Hobby Lobby specific yarn. These are all, I love this cotton. And in this turtle that I did, I used this really nice color uh, chartreuse or something like that. I'll have it linked down here and on the what you will need little slide that I have on here. I have this color and it is super pretty and it's nice and dark. I use that on both of these turtles actually. This I do on the shell and this I do on the head, fins, and tail really cute color. It's a newer one that they didn't have before. I'm also going to be using this nice color golden. This is like a, a an antique gold color. Then there is spunky, which I use on both of their bellies because I think it ties it on together. There's like a little bit of the chartreuse color right there as well as the antique gold so I think it really just kind of ties it all together and gives it that nice light color and then there's of course this very bright orange. The names for all these will again be on the little slide. This is all a size 4 worsted weight yarn so if that's the kind of yarn that you have whatever you are most comfortable with is what I say you definitely go with. You will also need some poly fill. Again I'm using Hobby Lobby specific. I like this like kind of cottony effect that it has versus other poly fills that I've tried that have this like plasticky touch to it. I hate stuffing and this stuff is a lot better and I like it a lot. Oh and for the leaf you're also gonna need I'm gonna be using sage in the worsted weight yarn and also brown. I did two separate little stems but we're going to be doing one more reminiscent of this stem for this little guy. We are also using a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my Frills crochet hook if you're interested in one of these. Links are down below. It is an affiliate code but I absolutely love this crochet hook so if you're interested in one of these any 3.25 millimeter will work though you will also need some 12 to 15 millimeter eyes the bigger the eyes the more kawaii or cute or whatever the little turtle will look i find that i use the bigger eyes for my whales and it looks better with the 12s versus the 15s just to give you an idea of what the size difference on that's gonna look like i'm also using a darning needle to sew in all my pieces all right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start, we're actually going to create this little ridge that you see on the shell. This gives it kind of a gourd pumpkin look. I really like it. And the way that I do that is I take the same color as the shell and I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna take a very 
long, like obscenely long piece of thread from the main shell color. I'm gonna take it from my worsted weight. It's bright orange, and honestly, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. We're gonna take our darning needle with this. I like to try to get this. It makes it a bit more manageable if you can kind of pull your yarn to be about roughly the same length on both sides. But generally, you're gonna take your darning needle. I like to go through the center just to kind of make it firm. So I try to aim it into the center or the original six single crochet that I created right here. It's right in the center. And what we're gonna do here is because we're doubled over, this is gonna work twofold. What I like to do is pull this until these two pieces right here, because they're about the same length, are about six inches long. That way when I'm tugging, I have some space to do stuff with and then I can take this later and hide it. But first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, a, basically try to see across from the head. We're gonna go opposite and go down and go through where the tail is. Then you're gonna go approximately, you're trying to divide this into fives essentially. And so what we're gonna do there is, let me see, how did I do this? That's how I did this, is we're gonna space it out where it's about right there. So I'm gonna wanna go like, nope, right there where I'm going in. So we're gonna go through here and pull that. And then I like to kind of pull it so that it is even. A, pull that even, make sure my strings are going the same way that I want them to be going. Get them kind of tug, tighten it a little bit so it looks like it's going in. And then because I went over here, we're gonna then go back through our center and go out through right around the head. That's where I wanna go. I'm gonna keep tugging, try to make everything look straight tug one of these figure out which one's the problem that's the problem there we go and then tug him a little bit as well and then take him and go through the center go down i'm going across essentially i don't want to go through the belly i want to go right above the ridge on my turtle and every time i'm having to kind of tug on one of these and make it so that it is even looking and looks nice. Don't worry, that might widen up a little bit, but it's okay because eventually I'm gonna hide it with all of these leaves and twine and tails. So now that we went through there around the head, I'm gonna go approximately, I'm trying to split the difference. I'm trying to make these into even quadrants for the most part while also getting around the head. So I think that it's not quite right. I want to go through there. There we go. That's where I want to go through. We're going to tug this, tug that, make this tugged a little bit more. And essentially we're just kind of tugging it and giving it an embroidery line. There we go. Then we're going to go through here. And I like to go through the center. And because I have no more lines to make, I'm going to go through the belly. There we go. Sorry, that went off camera for a second there. Tug. And so now I've got my nice little embroidery lines. It's mostly even, I mean, <laughs> mostly. We're gonna tug a lot of these, tug, tug, tug. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, my start, my initial. We're gonna kind of cut that off just right now. And what I like to do with my final ends is I like to kind of send them in opposite directions as i bounce my camera for good luck i like to send them in opposite directions and i send them through the shell to cut them so here we're trying to get it as far away from its base as you can so we're going to go through there and then go through there kind of tug get rid of that one and i'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the tails all right, so I finished off and hid all of my tails just like I showed. So now what we're going to do is take our brown yarn and we're gonna create a little stem. I like to create, again, another long tail. This is for sewing. And what we're gonna do is take our crochet hook and we're going to chain six. I go from left to right, it's okay. If you wanna go right to left, however you feel most comfortable, this is just the style that I do. So one, two, three, four, 
five. Oop, I glitched out right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. We hit and split it this time. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And in our second chain from our hook, so we're skipping the first one and going into the second one, we're going to put a single crochet inside this one. And then the next three stitches after this, so two. So a total of four single crochets. Three and four and then in our last stitch we're going to then slip stitch like so kind of tug on the stuff like that kind of pull on that and then cut our tail so that it is about the same length like so we're going to pull that and that is our stem right there i'm actually going to attach this now i like to attach it with the right piece right here I'm going to pick a portion of this piece right here. We have our little head right here. So what I'm going to do is kind of lay this right there. Put our first through. Come on, little buddy. I'm trying to get it to go through right here, but it's not wanting to be my friend right now. There we go. So I got it to go through. Sometimes they're a little snug, it's fine. All right, so we're gonna pull that through. Then we're gonna take our other tail and go the opposite way. And then, like so, we're gonna go through where it came out there and then where it came in. Trying not to pick up that extra yarn if we can help it. Pull that, pull that, kind of tug them both. And what we're gonna do is double knot it, like so. And then take our strings and a little bit of cat fur, as you do. It, you're literally a part of it. Okay, fine. I got it. There we go. And then take our tails, and I like to just go right through the top down the center and hide my tail. Most of the time I run it through two separate ways. I'm going to go through the center right there. I try not to let them all come out the same area, but it will be fine, I promise. So we're gonna pull that through, pull that, tug on him. You can wiggle your little guy and it'll go a little bit better instead of, I don't know. I've always put a little tension, give it a snip, and if it still shows, I then kind of like wiggle around and that helps. So that is our stem to our pumpkin. And honestly, it's kind of cute just like that. But I am going to show you how to do the twine next. Be right back. All right, so for the twine, I try to use the same color as the head, fins, and tail as I did on this one. I used the antique gold. You could just use antique gold. It looks pretty cute, even over here. I used the antique gold on this orange one, but I don't have another like color that's going with it. So for this, I'm gonna use this really pretty, uh, I think it's called bruschetta. I'm not 100% sure what the name of this color is. It'll You'll already know what it is, and I'm probably just butchering it. So uh, essentially, I'm gonna do the same thing where I create a nice long tail that's for sewing later. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chain 10 this time. If I can make a nice little slip knot like so. We're going to, again, make a tail that's even longer than it should be, but that'll be fine for sewing. It's fine. It's all fine. Uh, we're going to chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Essentially, we're making it as many as we want this to be long. So if you want it longer, you could do a little bit more, or if you want it shorter, you could do a little bit less. So we're going to again go into the second chain from our hook, skip this first one and go into this one. But this time, in order to create this spiral to get it all bunched up, we're gonna put one single crochet inside that stitch and then go back inside that same exact chain and put a second stitch. And we're gonna do this in every single chain up to the last one. And then the last one, I'll show you what we do. So essentially we just go again, one, and same stitch two. We're increasing every single chain essentially. One and 
two, and you can see already it's starting to curl in on itself. So one, two, it wants to just, it, it, it can't go in a straight line because it's so many stitches in one place. One, two, next chain, one, it's kind of hard to see now that it's starting to bunch. One, two, one, two, and in the last stitch before our last last stitch, so in the second to last stitch, there we go, and now we have one more, and what we're going to do is just slip stitch off and do the same thing where we leave a nice long tail and then I sew it on the exact same way. I should clarify that when I'm sewing I try to sew it along the next quadrant. I try to split it up into thirds, those original six single crochet. So I crocheted along two of the stitches along there and along two of the stitches here and when I do the leaf I'll do it right along here trying to get them all kind of being around that magic ring area. And I'm going to sew on the leaf the exact same way. So let's go ahead and go on to the leaf and how I make that. Okay so for the leaf we're going to again leave a nice long tail for sewing and grab onto our tail like that and make a nice little slip knot we're gonna grab onto our crochet hook like so and we're going to chain six so one two three four five six and i like to make them a little bit loose but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to join this into a ring and essentially i'm going to go into this last our first that we made our little magic ring i'm going to slip stitch and that makes it into a bit of a ring. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to act like my tail is a part of this ring and work with it inside of it just to kind of pull things a little bit long. We're going to chain two, so one, two, and then we're going to put four double crochet on the inside of this. That original chain two is acting as if it is a double crochet, so when we do a five double crochet thing later, that will make a bit more sense. I try to loosen my tension, so one, two, three, four, and so that it basically acts as five double crochet. This is the right side of our little leaf here, and what we're going to do next is we're going to chain three. So one, oh, I'm going to redo that double crochet that I just did because apparently I had split my yarn and that does not look okay. So I just undid two of those stitches that I just made. I'm going to smooth that out. Everybody makes mistakes. So three. Let's do that again. And then four. Acting as if our tail is a part of our little leaf here. And now we're going to do our chain three again. So one. There we go. Much better. Two. Three. This is older yarn that I've had kind of just sitting around. So that's why it's splitting so much. It's bugging me. All right, so now with that three chain, we're going to put our hook back into the first chain one that we made, and the very first one, but the one we just made for that chain three cycle, essentially, and we're going to slip stitch into it. That creates this kind of ridge, which creates essentially this on our little leaf, giving it that little bit of an angle. So now with that done, we're going to actually double crochet back inside of our original ring, and we're going to put five double crochet inside this side because we did the four plus our chain two on the other side. We need to make this even. So we're going to go two, three, four, and five. Now, because we worked our tail in with the rest of our work, we can kind of tug on it and that'll bring it tighter in and make it look a bit more concrete. We're going to take our crochet hook and go through the original chains from this slip stitch off and that is your little leaf. We're going to cut our tail, throw a yarn somewhere, I don't know where that just went. It came off from, from the side of the camera. So then we're going to pull that through. And something that I like to do here is I like to take these two tails and I like to double knot them just to make it so that that tail doesn't come undone and it really pulls it tight. 
double knot them, makes it firm, makes it not go anywhere, and now that hole is completely closed. And here, we're gonna do the same method. Take our right one so it's facing upward, the rightmost uh, tail. We're gonna take that and go over here and so I'm on. So I'm gonna take it and go through right there, I think. Yeah, that sounds good. Just kind of tag them on there, grab the other one, and then do the exact opposite. So go in where he came out and go out where he came in. I hope that makes sense. And like that. And that is pretty much all there is to it. You can do the same thing tug on your tails again, do another double knot. You're doing a lot of double knots with this one. I like how this looks. You could hot glue these on. I did with the head. I always do it with my turtle's heads because I find that it looks the best when I can get it done like that. But tug that in and hide your tails. You can do this with really any kind of amigurumi. Make it into a nice cute little pumpkin uh, version for fall. I think it's super duper cute and I love how it turned out. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see for future uh, fruit whales and fruit turtles because I'm going to be doing a lot of them. I have some other ones that I'm working on. I did a poll in my community tab and you guys wanted to see the pumpkin the most. So I might do another poll and see what you would like to see for the next. Oh, that's a problem. What you guys would like to see for the next uh, fruit whale series. I am working on a how to make money with yarn series as well and I've got a couple knit crates that I need to open but generally I've got other cuties that are in the works. This one is done as soon as I cut my tail so let's just get that done real quick. Again you can kind of just squish and he goes right inside. He's all done and I think I like him more than I like the other one. These turned out super duper cute. I have a blueberry whale that I'm thinking I need to get done soon. I also have this cute little watermelon, which everybody really likes. I love his belly. It's so cute and it's so easy. He might end up being on there as well. I also have the same uh, nice little twine on him. So that is pretty much a similarity and how I would do that is me showing you the twine again in that tutorial and also how... I do the embroidery for the pumpkin and how I do the embroidery for the cute little belly. I have a blueberry and the same thing goes with all the whales that I've done for this too. The only difference between that turtle and any of the others is I did the little top right here a little bit differently. And I also have the lemon and lime coming out. So let me know what you would like to see in the future. Of course, my last video was this cute little strawberry. You can do this with plush yarn and I'm gonna be doing a video on how to transfer. And I'm gonna be doing a video on how to turn any of your amigurumi patterns into a plush amigurumi pattern and how I basically do that. I love how these turned out and it's super duper cute. Um, let me know what you'd like to see down below for future amigurumi videos. It's basically up against these guys. I also have a sushi <laughs> turtle and whale that I've done, but that's just a really silly color variation that I did. And I also have a dragon fruit version, which I have somewhere. I just don't know where I put it. But basically that's it. Let me know what you would like to see. Make sure to get the printable PDF down below if you're interested in this or in the cute little whale versions. It's super duper adorable and be sure to get that before your week is up. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, we have a Patreon. So if you're interested in that, we do have some rewards over there that you can get free patterns and stuff. Uh, basically early access tutorials, other stuff. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, guys. Bye!